For over 30 years, puzzle games have been an important part of the gaming industry. Games like Tetris and Dr. Mario have permeated the genre in many ways and entertained millions of fans. And perhaps it's because of the concept's popularity that new products appear from time to time, with the aim of entertaining new and old audiences. Dr. Fetus is just such a game that in many ways brings to mind Dr. Mario and Puyo Puyo Tetris. But at the same time, it's clear that the game's developers try to turn things upside down and go in a different direction. But what is really so special about Dr. Fetus? In this review I discuss how this game is experienced on Nintendo Switch and if it's worth buying. Feel free to subscribe to my channel, I review new games every week. So what kind of game is this? You could generally say that it's a mix between Puyo Puyo Tetris and Super Meat Boy, where the gameplay is most reminiscent of the former. You will see falling colored figures that must be removed by creating chains of four. The goal is to get through a number of levels, take on a boss and then open up new worlds. It's actually quite a comprehensive game. There are more than a hundred levels, so if you want to play from start to finish, you have a lot of gameplay to look forward to. Visually and design-wise, however, it's very similar to Super Meat Boy. Many levels have obstacles found in Super Meat Boy, for example, deadly saw blades, chainsaws and lava. In addition, you may recognize the worlds, such as the forest, salt factory and hell. So of course, there are clear similarities between this game and Super Meat Boy. But again, I really want to point out that this is not a sequel. Rather, this can be seen as a spin-off or a standalone game that goes in the direction of Puyo Puyo Tetris or Dr. Mario, if you like. I also want to point out that this is a single-player game. You cannot play against your friends or compete against others online. In other words, this is about your ability to cope with the levels that are given. Personally, I think this type of game invites to play co-op. It should be a mandatory feature, maybe in a future patch. We will have to wait and see, but now it is what it is. It's you against the computer. Let's look at how the levels are designed. You have to clear 19 levels before you meet a boss. Each level usually consists of three phases of increasing difficulty. This could mean, for example, that more obstacles are added. In this level, you first have to avoid homing missiles. In phase two, small saw blades are added that move horizontally. Finally, larger saw blades are activated, which must be deactivated by touching the exclamation marks. That said, this is usually how the levels are designed, that they become more complicated and challenging. And I think it's one of the game's strengths, that it's unpredictable. You don't know what difficulties await you next, so if you factor in a large variety of challenges, this actually becomes quite an interesting experience. However, it's not possible to set the difficulty level. You cannot choose between easy, normal or hard. No such function exists. However, there is a feature that makes you invincible, perhaps useful if you feel that you're totally stuck and want to skip a level. It could possibly also be a good feature if you want younger children to play. The experience becomes more forgiving. For this, you can also set the speed and remove visual blood. Definitely child friendly. The control is simple but smooth. I have played with a Pro Controller and with Joy-Cons, and in general it feels that both controllers work well for this game. Some moments require a certain precision, and I think it can feel clumsy to use the left stick. But since you can move with the D-pad, it's an option I think feels better. Maybe it's just a personal choice, but the D-pad really shines in a positive way in this game. There is also the ability to make quick sideways movements by using L and R, which can be useful when being chased by missiles. In addition, you can slow down if you press ZR and LR. This is useful if you risk crashing into an obstacle. Of course, you can rotate by using A, B, X and Y, so these are the functions that are used. It's not that complicated, but if you put it in relation to how the levels are designed, it becomes clear that the challenge lies in dodging objects and having good timing. Because that's exactly what this game is all about, being able to read how all the obstacles move and what speed they have so that you can lay your lines as smoothly as possible. 
Dr. Fetter's Mean Meat Machine is a puzzle game that I think can suit all those who like Tetris or Dr. Mario. It has a pretty cool design and contains lots of levels with different challenges. And it's precisely here that we find the bulk of the entertainment value. The game's developers have indeed created a rich variety of levels that can challenge the player in different ways. Also, if you are a fan of Super Meat Boy and appreciate the visual similarities, many worlds and obstacles are recognizable from before. In the Nintendo eShop, the game costs $10, which is an acceptable price, for sure. There is enough value for the price to feel fair, so if you want a puzzle game with a varied degree of difficulty, with a visual story, I can recommend this game. But remember, this is not Super Meat Boy 2.0. This is a game that falls under the category of puzzle games. Just saying. Feel free to subscribe to my channel. I review new games every week. Have a nice day. See ya!